Welcome to this Millennium Tour. The Millennium Phenomenon is, uh, is huge, so we're going to walk quite fast. Every week, dozens of tourists from all over the world flock to this quaint neighborhood in Stockholm. The first international tourists to come on these tours were the Italians, and then the French, the Spanish ones, and this summer it's the Americans. Strangers, bound by a singular obsession for a girl with a dragon tattoo. If you continue this direction, you will reach where Lisbeth Salander grew up. Never mind that the girl, Lisbeth Salander, is an imaginary character. For American Sharon Svensson, even foot surgery couldn't keep her from making the pilgrimage to Salander's world. I said, oh my gosh, I'm going back to California the day after tomorrow. I have to go on this tour. Salander and the world she inhabits, filled with political intrigue, violence and sex, are the creations of Stieg Larsson, a Swedish journalist and first-time novelist who didn't live to see the phenomenon his books would become, selling more than 46 million copies worldwide. I don't think you can compare this with anything else, actually. Eva Geddon is the editor of what is now known as the Millennium Trilogy. Let's be honest, Eva, when you first read these, did you have any idea that they would become as popular as they have? No, I mean, who could anyone know uh, what we know today? The girl with the dragon tattoo, the girl who played with fire, and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest have been translated into 44 languages. The dragon tattoo is the best-selling e-book of all time. And in the two years since Americans discovered Larson's novels, the publishers have had to go back to press 197 times to keep up with demand. Not to mention the Swedish movie versions already in theaters. Hollywood will soon follow suit with movies of its own starring Daniel Craig. All this for a man who, when he first met Eva Geddon in the spring of 2004, was an unpublished novelist with big dreams. He wanted to do something new, something else, something that didn't look like, like other uh, Swedish crime writing. Larson's protagonist is something new, all right. A 24-year-old tattooed bisexual, maybe even autistic woman who takes on the world of organized crime, dishonest bankers and neo-Nazis. <laughs> played here by Swedish actress Numi Rapaci. Her partner in fighting crime is Mikhail Bloomquist, a journalist who, like Larson himself, runs a magazine. In the books, the magazine is Millennium. In real life, Expo. How much is Expo, the real magazine, like the fictional magazine that Stieg created in his books. For me, it's obvious that the millennium is a fantasy. 29-year-old Daniel Poole is the editor of Expo, the magazine founded by Stieg Larsson in 1995. We had a small room where we would use to smoke. Sitting in that room, smoking cigarettes and listening to Stieg's stories because he was a great storyteller, a really great storyteller. Larson used his magazine Expo and later his crime novels to battle against what he saw as the rise of racist and anti-Semitic extremist groups. He saw the dark sides of Sweden, he saw the racism, he saw the violence against women. He saw many things that he wanted to change. Although he shunned the limelight, Larsson did appear occasionally on Swedish television to speak about his work. He lived modestly with a woman he met when he was only 18, Eva Gabrielsson, until November 9, 2004, just three months after Stig Larsson turned 50 and five months before his first book was published. I come home from work and my dad phones and said Stig had collapsed. Joachim is Stig Larsson's younger brother. Larsson had collapsed after walking up the seven flights of stairs to his office. His father Erlen rushed from the northern town of Umeå to Stockholm to see his oldest son. 
He was too late. My niece weakened. It can't be possible. You know, children shouldn't die before their parents. Almost immediately, there were rumors Stig Larsson had been poisoned, murdered by the extremists he had railed against. The fact that there actually is conspiracy theories around Stig's death is to me both absurd and in another way very ironic because Stieg was, he loved conspiracy theories. But Larson was a coffee-drinking, chain-smoking workaholic who by most accounts didn't take care of his health. He had a fatal heart attack, dying before his books took the literary world by storm. Stieg is today so famous, so his book is so popular that we can't spend energy trying to clear all these all these questions. Uh, what we are doing is try to explain who Stieg was. And I guess for most of the people who like this book, that's enough. But questions and controversies surrounding Larson and his books continue, even today, nearly six years after his death, especially those concerning his longtime girlfriend, Eva Gabrielson. What happened with the relationship between the two of you and Eva? I don't really understand. Yeah, no, we don't understand. Uh, we find out that we inherited everything, and uh, Eva just stopped talking with us. Larson and Gabrielson lived together for 32 years, but because Sweden does not recognize common law marriages, and Larson died without a will, his brother and father inherited everything the rights to his books and his estate estimated to be worth around $20 million. This is the reality. We want to work with Eva. She says no. We tried for nearly six years to get an agreement with her in some sort, in any way. But she turned us down all the time for some reason. You have to speak with her about that. Gabrielson declined our request for an interview, but she has spoken out publicly against the Larsons. She said that she knows more what Stieg wanted to do with his legacy, with this money, than either of you. Yeah, well, maybe so, but someone have to take care of this. She don't want to work with us, so that's her choice. There's another mystery that Eva Gabrielson refuses to clear up, and that's the question whether Stieg Larsson wrote yet another book before he died. Larson told friends that one did exist, but none of them had seen it. Well, we can now confirm it. There is, in fact, an unpublished manuscript. Have you seen it? Have you read it? I hold it for a couple of seconds. Was the book completed? No. I, I got an email from Stieg uh, 10 days before he died where he wrote that uh, book number four is nearly finished. But according to Brother Joachim, it really isn't the fourth book of the 10 volumes Stieg hoped to write in the series. And to make it more complicated, this book number four, that's uh, book number five because he thought that was more fun to write than book number four. So. Oh, so actually the book we all keep calling four, yeah. you think is actually the fifth yeah. in his series. Yeah. Erlen Larsen last saw the manuscript just days after his son died. It's in the hands of Eva Gabrielson, and the two sides are now at a stalemate. The Larsons say they won't publish the book even if it surfaces. All this real-life family drama seems to have only fueled sales of Larson's books, as fanatic readers take sides. What do you think Steek would think of the conflict that has occurred between the woman that he loved and lived mm. with and his father and brother? Of course it's a tragedy, and uh, Steek would have looked at it the same way. Steek never cared for money, so he wouldn't have understood <laughs> the situation. Stieg Larsson, who in life never made more than $30,000 a year, has achieved in death what most authors only dream of. He is now a world-famous writer who's left his readers desperate for more.